The world is fascinating, but how does it work? Hey guys, my name is Fabe and this is Minecraft and Science, a show where I try to explain to you how the world works using Minecraft. Today we are getting started with the foundation of everything. You all may know that every kind of matter consists out of smallest particles called atoms. Even some Greeks back 500 years BC had already guessed that. But the first time those particles were investigated a little bit more carefully was in the 19th century. John Dalton was the physicist that founded the modern atomic theory. He imagined the atoms like spheres that move around more or less unrestrained through space. A little later, J.J. Thomson was one of the scientists that discovered the electrons as negatively charged particles. He found out that these electrons are in each atom. Based on this, he developed the watermelon model. <laughs> in his model, the whole melon is equivalent to the atom, where the pulp was representing the homogeneous spreaded mass with a positive charge, and the melon seeds were the negatively charged electrons, which are randomly distributed within the melon. However, it was soon shown that this model wasn't sufficient at all. Ernest Rutherford made a nice little experiment. He shot alpha particles at a really thin gold foil. It was just several atoms thick. What he noticed was that most of the alpha particles went just straight through the foil. And such a thing can only happen if the atoms are mostly nothing. And indeed, the core of the atom that is carrying the positive charge is 100,000 times smaller than the atom itself. Hence, the size of the atom is determined by the distance of the electrons to the core. At the same time, the mass of the atom is determined by the core. Since the core is positively charged and the electrons are negatively charged, there has to be a force that keeps the electrons away from the core. That force is provided by the circular movement of the electrons around the core. The speed of the electrons is just enough so that the centrifugal force cancels out the Coulomb force of the charges. Despite all that, this model was still not sufficient to explain a lot of the observed effects. Niels Bohr tried to improve it further by restricting the circular paths of the electron to limited, exactly defined orbits. This was a result of the observations he made on the light that was emitted by a hydrogen atom after excitation. So how do you excite a hydrogen atom? First of all, you have to know that each of those orbits has a different energy. That is why those orbits are also referred to as energy states. This energy would be released if the electron were to fall all the way down to the core. In this model, the further you get away from the core, the bigger is the energy of the orbit. That means if you were to meet a random hydrogen atom on the street, it would probably have its electron in the smallest orbit or the smallest shell if you think in three dimensions. Because everything wants to have the least possible energy, always. Now, you could fire a very fast electron at the atom. During the collision, it is possible that the kinetic energy of the electron gets partially transferred to the atom and the electron moves on with a smaller velocity. This is called an inelastic collision. The atom with the additional energy can now be called an excited atom. The additional energy is stored in the orbit of the electron, hence the orbit of the electron gets wider. But since the atom wants to have the least possible amount of energy, it finds a way to get rid of the additional energy. It emits light of exactly the energy it got from the electron that hit it and gets back to the ground state. Naturally, you would think that any amount of energy could be transferred that way. And what you would expect is emitted light of every possible energy the fast electron could have given to the atom. But wouldn't it be too nice if everything was that simple? <laughs> that is where quantum mechanics come into play. In his experiment, Mr. Bohr was just able to detect light with only a few distinctive energies that were always the same. So how could that be explained? Well, Bohr postulated that there are only a few allowed orbits an electron can be in and the energy differences between those orbits are the energies he observed in the emitted light. This approach totally explains the behavior of a hydrogen atom with only one electron, but it can't explain the behavior of atoms with several electrons. It also can't explain why it should be the case that the electrons only can occupy certain orbits. Since this model was still insufficient to explain all observed effects, the scientists had to go deeper into the quantum mechanics. 
Erwin Schrödinger and Werner Heisenberg were two of those scientists. Schrödinger's equation manages to connect the discrete energy states of an atom with the probability of the position of the electrons. In addition to that, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle says that you can't determine position and speed of a particle at the same time. So now the electrons are no longer in a certain orbit around the core, but can much rather be everywhere with a certain probability. And those probabilities are strongly dependent on the energy state of the atom. So theoretically you can meet an electron of a certain atom infinitely far away from the core. But of course the probability of meeting that electron gets lower the further you move away from the core. The disadvantage of this model is that it can't be visualized anymore. The orbital model is just an attempt to do this. Usually the orbitals show the space in which you can find an electron with a probability of over 90%. Those are the first four orbitals that are seen the most often in the literature. This model is able to explain most of the chemical and a lot of physical observations that were made. But you have to remember that this is still not the truth. If you just consider the math behind it without trying to visualize anything, you can get a bit closer. But people are still not sure to this day if they have discovered the whole truth. However, any further discussion goes definitely beyond the scope of this video.